guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna to be taking you through a day in the life. So it's currently about 5.30 a.m. for me. This is when I normally wake up and I take pickles for obedience training and we go for a walk. Got a few things on watch, so mainly Aussie pairs. So Aussie Yen is in a really nice area where it could literally completely drop out. So waiting for some lower time frame confirmation on that. Pound Aussie, I mean, it's in a very valuable area, but I'm more neutral on Pound Aussie at the minute. We just need a bit of a message from the market today. Euro Aussie as well, really, really nice area. So just waiting for a bit of development. Those will be my main, I do like Aussie 200 as well, but that won't be ready just yet. And then Aussie Kiwi, but that'll probably be ready early next week. So I'll check these throughout today. If we get an entry, great. If not, you know, we will reconvene. Trading is not so much about trading every single day. You know, sometimes I'll have two or three things on watch. Sometimes it'll materialize. Might not take a trade for two or three days. Sometimes it'll take three trades, one each day in a row. It is what it is. You trade accordingly when the market gives you the opportunity. But that will be my main ones for today. Let's see how it goes. Sometimes Friday's a big day. Hey mum, morning. I'm just uh, looking at your house right now. I'm really excited for you to come around this weekend and you can just see how everything's progressed. It's looking really nice. Everything is pretty much done now and I'm just waiting for those TVs to be installed. So they gave me an installation date uh, really soon and that's literally the last thing and then it's just got to be painted on the outside but I can't wait to see it, it's looking so good. Wow. You can only see it if it's there. In life, unfortunately, the fog's going to roll in. It's just part of nature, it's part of the cycle of life. Mm -hmm. and when that fog rolls in, don't allow that to make you think what you know is really in there isn't there because it is there. That dream is there, that relationship, that body, that business is there even though you can't see it. Right guys, so 6 a.m. morning cardio for me. I train fasted fully, so I don't actually eat until about 12, 1 p.m. Sometimes I push it a little bit longer, but time to get the cardio in. Right guys, so for me, morning cardio, 6 a.m. Absolutely love it. For me, routine is, is everything. So I'm just listening to actually one of Gary V's. Let's pause that for a sec. Oh, a bit temperamental. So for me, even just listening to like older videos, like Gary Vee is someone that I look up to massively. You probably saw a clip earlier of me listening to something from Ed Milet, big inspiration of mine as well. And he was talking about sometimes when things are a little bit foggy, things are a bit murky, something's not always clear. You don't always have to see something to know it's there. And it's in those days that you don't, I'll be completely honest, I was exhausted this morning, but I've trained this trigger in my mind that when I'm exhausted and I need to get to the gym, I need to do my cardio. I've got PT later as well. Friday's a very stacked, packed day for me. So I wanted to take you guys along and kind of show you. Every day's different, every day's dynamic for me. But what I'm really mindful of, especially in the morning, how I want to set my day, I want to make sure, who am I listening to? What thoughts are going into my head? Gary Vee is a huge inspiration of mine as well. Someone that I massively look up to, first sort of 15 minutes of the day as well, I like to make sure that I know what's happened in the markets overnight, so naturally I want to see what's happened over the Asian session. Is there anything that I was looking at the night before materialised? And then I usually have two, three pairs on watch, and I can tell whether something's going to be ready literally in the London session, or might be like three, four hours, a little bit later, or something that's going to be ready more towards the New York session. But we'll see how that goes. Time to finish the cardio. Let's get to the office.
Right guys, so now we are on the chart. So that was part of my morning routine, bulletproof coffee, cold shower, of course. I know some of you are afraid of the cold showers, but get them done, they make you feel awake. Daily goals are done. Remember, if you want to have a productive day, your planning starts the night before. Your morning routine starts the night before. What I love to do is my values and my affirmations in the morning, because it's about, this is why I love this. The sit stand up desk is a game changer, by the way. Right, having your physiology, feeling connected, feeling inspired, having clarity about what you're going to do. Success is not complicated, guys. I'm gonna take you through my day. Friday, as I said, is a very much a stacked day and it's important to me that I know what's happened in the Asian session overnight, which is why I love to check the charts early in the morning so I know exactly what's going on. Some people have this fear and anxiety. I used to be exactly the same where I would wake up in the morning and then straight away I would check the charts instantly. It would be the first thing that I do. And I'd be looking, right, if I've taken a position overnight, like something like Aussie dollar, I would look at it and think, oh, I would have this feeling in my stomach that if I'm tagged in or if I'm tagged out, if I've taken a loss, and I would only feel good if I've taken a trade and I would see it running in profit, then I'd move to break even or lock some profit in. And that's not a good way to be. And it does take time and emotional almost rewiring to make sure that your, your mind is in the right place to be able to deal with that. So it takes time, guys. So if you feel that way, you have to go through a process to, to kind of get rid of that and work in a way that you don't feel that anxiety because yeah, that's, that's a tough one, that's for sure. But again, training your mind is key in this game. It's, this is a mental game, not just a technical game. But speaking of technicals, guys, I want to take a look at what's on the chart. So daily goals is clear. I know exactly what I'm going to be doing and what I like to do is kind of tick it off throughout the day. And I'm looking at a few things as I mentioned earlier. So here I have Aussie 200. So Aussie 200, I know not all of you trade these instruments, but Aussie 200 as a whole, I think is in such a valuable area. Look at that. We have a huge expanding formation. We broke the double top. And this is normally an area in which that we see these shakeouts. This is due a sell off. And when they sell off, as you can see, they can sell off very, very aggressively. And when we do, we want, we want to capitalize on those impulsive waves. So essentially what I will be doing is looking for lower time frame confirmation as to where I would like to enter. So I can already see very, very clearly these are the areas that I want to be entering. So again, I will be looking for lower time frame confirmation in those areas, keeping it very, very simple, and then be looking for entries around this area to catch this next impulsive wave. And if we even just look at this part here, so that run, so from the top of roughly where I would want to enter, to the actual break of that structure, where do we line up? It's very likely we will supersede that, which just happens to line up with this low. So that would be our target. So I keep that very simple. Now, I can already tell just by looking at it, I'm probably not gonna take that today because for this to be ready, naturally price would need to develop. So I can see that's gonna take me into early next week. So do I really need to focus on it today? Not really, and I think this is where most traders go wrong. They're forcing and searching for positions. I can already cross that off and say, right, Probably Monday, Tuesday, that's when that'll be ready. However, let's take a look through my watch list. So I've got Euro Dollar, Pound Aussie, Euro Pound, Euro Aussie, Aussie Yen, Pound Yen, Dollar CAD, Aussie 200, and Aussie Kiwi. Now, I'm not going to be going through all of those and trying to find trades in all of those all day. I will look for two to three positions that I think that may be ready for today. And if they are, great. If not, we trade another day. You don't trade every single day. Well, how we trade the markets, which we look for sustainability, I'm not interested in taking four or five positions a day or even one position a day. Sometimes I might not take a trade for three days. So what, I, what I'm really looking forward to with these kind of day in the life things is taking you guys through different types of days. Some days I may do a day in the life where it's very, very active and some days I may do a day in the life where there's no trades at all, but I'm aiming to give you more of an overview as to what I do through, through my days. It's very dynamic as I'm running multiple businesses as well and hoping you, get, you guys get some tips as well. But now let's get into some more chart work. So just finished up with a bit of chart work. I've got a very, very good idea as to what I'll be looking at. So only one trade this week for me, which was earlier on in the week, which is Aussie Kiwi. Uh, this is a difficult pair to trade, so got 1.4% on that this week, but overall looking at a much bigger picture. So point of interest here, this is a very, very valuable area. It looks like we're coming back down again to maybe shake out, pierce those lows, get 
essentially those people caught on the wrong side of the market before we get that impulsive wave. But main one, I mean, Euro Sterling has, we've been looking at Euro Sterling to be looking for some buys on this for a while. So we broke that low, which again, is exactly what I was talking about on Aussie Kiwi. So essentially we shake people out, we push back up and then we're looking for continuation back towards these areas. So that's what I'll be looking at for Euro Sterling. But main thing for me now is Euro Aussie. So we've been looking at Euro Aussie for a little while. It's gone a little bit higher, but it's in a very valuable area right now and we can see that we're just rejecting in that area. That is looking nice. So once we get some lower time frame confirmation, if we get that push down followed by continuation, of course, how we will enter the markets, we've got a very clear target. That would be the main thing. Anything else, I don't really see it today. Unless anything drastic changes, then I'll take a look and I'll be aware of the markets. But main thing for me, if there will be a trade today, it will probably be Euro Aussie. But apart from that, I have a quick call that I've got to make with my investors and then I have PT shortly as well, so. Right, next up, PT. So morning routine done, call with investors done, that's all sorted. Uh, now on my way to PT. PT for me is about accountability. So every Friday, 10 a.m. I have that PT session. It keeps me on check, keeps me on check all the things that I'm doing. And I absolutely love it. And for me, having those things in place, we need accountability in all areas of our life. Now through this day in the life, I wanna try and keep it as as almost normal as possible, as the most normal day that I can kind of show you, if you like, which I will be doing variations of these just to give you more of a, an insight into what I do. However, if some of you are coming onto this channel for the first time, you might be thinking, right, day in the life, you're gonna to go to lavish restaurants and things like that. Uh, for some people, if that is your goal and that's how you wanna build your life around, fair enough. But for me, like, I've still got way too much ambition and things to do. I haven't got time to sit there. There's a time and a place when to enjoy yourself, but for me, that's not right now. I've got way too many big goals to focus on. So for me right now, I'm just putting in the work, hours and hours and hours. And to be honest, I absolutely love it. I love working on things that inspire me. And that's what keeps me, that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me the fuel. So I wouldn't have it any other way. Fully stacked, and then um, just getting stuff ready for my parents' place. Yeah, so you must be only like days away from having this finished now. Yeah. Yeah, literally, it's finished now. So the TVs are in. I'm just waiting for an installation date, oh, okay. uh, and then that's literally it. So my mum came and saw it the other day, and she wants to like tear in her eyes. Well, Matt, I'm surprised she probably didn't as well, though, no? Not it's yet. A big, it's a big, it's a big. Well, like we spoke about last week, man. Like yeah. I said, it's just one of those lifetime goals yeah. and ambitions to have something like that. Hundred percent. So, mate, what you've done is unbelievable. So, I can't wait to come up and see it myself. Yeah, you you'll love it, mate. Yeah. You could fluke it. You could have yeah. started trading a month ago and you happen to put a sequence of trades on. There happen to be winners. Now you've got 100K. What if you emotionally don't have the right uh, frame of mind? You've got no life experience in the markets or you could be an 18 year old. Yeah. That's dangerous for people to have yeah, that. They're yeah. not ready for 100K. No. So with our one, you can't fluke it. It takes discipline and a process. So yeah. it takes a little bit longer. But once you pass it, the rules are a lot easier. Yes. But then you've built the discipline. You've done the hard work. You're more likely to keep the money yeah. and actually scale up. Yeah, because irrespective of actually what trades are being placed or how much money from a numbers point of view you have, 
it doesn't matter. Exactly. Right? It's five pounds or five million pounds. Exactly. Now, it's the same process. So, yeah. Some person was asking for when about trading, learning how to learn how to trade. He's an engineer mm -hmm. and um, super skeptical, just like really, really skeptical. Um, yeah. But he'd done lots of engineering work on lots of trading floors. Okay. So he's seen like traders and firms, you know, like drive Bentleys and Lamborghinis. Yeah. So he's like, obviously he wants that lifestyle, you know? Yeah. And, um, and he expected me, the thing is with me, like I'll, I'll always tell the truth. I'll always be honest. I won't uh, glorify something, as you know. Of course. As to how long something will take. And his question was, like, oh, how long is it, how long is it going to take me? And I was just like, listen, you have to come into this industry and accept that you might not make a single penny for a year, mm -hmm. maybe even two. That's still your testing phase. Yeah. That's still your learning phase. There may be so many things you need to learn. Yeah. And then his face was just shocked. He was, like, was like, two years. I was like, listen, I didn't make any money for four years. Yeah, of course. Right? And I had no one to lean on, no mentors telling me what to do, or yeah. emotional support. I just got on with it. And he said to me, and after I realized that his mind was just like not mentally equipped to be able to train. Like manage your expectations. Of course. You know, but it's because people have a financial investment, whether it's in a trade, whether it's in a training program, whether it's in a membership, they somehow think that because they're investing money that miracles will happen and they don't understand that these things take time, right? They're a process. Like you said downstairs, people can fluke it, but is it sustainable? It took you 10 years to get here. How long do you think it's going to take to get back? Or in fact, you've never been there before. Exactly. How long do you think it will take? You know, it's just managing expectations is something that in both of our industries, although they're completely different and incredibly similar, uh, one thing that you said to me a long time ago, which I think is really good and in line with um, incremental growth, which I think is a philosophy that especially for those that are you know, into their fitness and just even trading in general, which was the uh, just for today. Yes. Did you mate. talk about that for a second? I, I love that. Yeah, so I mean, I have it tattooed on me mm -hmm. over my chest, onto my back and shoulder. And having the kind of the JFT philosophy, the just for today mindset, is people that whether they're trying to abstain from something or whether they're trying to obtain something, it's having a mentality of just applying yourself fully, wholeheartedly, each day. Just for today, I won't eat any junk food. Just for today, I will exercise. Just for today, I will try and hit 10,000 steps. Just, you know, whatever it might be, right? So you have five, maybe three, maybe two just for today's. And you just apply yourself each day to try and achieve that for that day only. Mm -hmm. So whether you had a terrible day the day before and you sat on the sofa all day and ate chocolate, or whether tomorrow you might again be a completely mental and physical loafer, at least today, just for this day, you can give it 110%. You know, it doesn't have to be just to do with your work and making money. It can be in every single aspect of life that if you just apply yourself each day, one day at a time, not worrying about yesterday or worrying about tomorrow, it makes life become so much more manageable all of a sudden. I, I love it, and I think that alone, but that is how you build momentum. Most people can't think about two days' time, even no. if something simple, but who can't just for today? Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. I, I really do. I think anyone listening can take value from that and just apply that. And it is just for today, so don't overstress it. just finished up with this session guys that was a really really good session hopefully you enjoyed coming behind the scenes big shout out to Tom for letting me film behind the scenes as well Tom is such a, a lovely 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 guy very very ambitious I'm so impressed by what he's done I've been training Tom for quite a long period of time now I remember even years and years ago he had this vision for uh, this gym that he wanted to create and he's now created that gym and it's coming to fruition such a knowledgeable very very particular and he just cares like this is why I resonate with his energy a lot because he really, really cares about like you getting in shape, cares about what you're doing, what you're eating, these type of things. And you need people around you that are mentoring you in different areas of your life to give a shit. Like they have to really care. And you can tell and then you get that from Tom 100%. And I hope you guys enjoyed some of the conversations behind the scenes as well. But I am, I'm not that far away from home actually. So I'm just gonna jump back, jump into the shower again and I will be breaking my fast about 1 p.m., half one, it depends. I've got a call with uh, Brian. So Brian Stewart is one of our funded students. He just passed his assessment phase, so his account has been quadrupled. I'm gonna be jumping on, catching up with him, congratulating him as well, and we're gonna be filming a podcast on Inside the Mind, so can't wait for you guys. 
Right guys, so just back in the office, just taking a look at the charts, seeing how your Aussie is playing out, four hour close in a couple of hours. I mean, I can already gauge. The thing is, right on Friday, sometimes my best trades are on a Friday. Some people have always had these myths before where it's like, don't trade on a Friday. Reality is, if we get a strong close there on the four hour, those kind of tweezer tops, that would be beautiful. And then some momentum down there on the one hour, and then I'll filter that on the 15. So if we get that entry today, I will take that. If not, we will, we will leave it. Remember, protecting your capital is just as important as the trades that you take. But I am about to jump into a podcast with Brian Stewart, as I mentioned, right? So Inside the Mind podcast, we'll probably put some snippets on this episode, but it will be a full episode on Spotify, etc., and on the Falcon YouTube, which I'm really excited for. And yeah, it's just going to be so cool to see Brian scale up and so many more. There are literally so many people like edging towards them passing, getting to their next stage as well. And for us of what we created to make sure that we're there for them at each stage, you know, because there's going to be emotional hurdles that come up at every stage in their journey. It's important that we're there for them, helping them, making sure the psychology is in place and they have the right structure. So I'm excited, but yeah, let's dive in. Well, for me, I said before kids and everything came along, I said, look, um, why not? The time's going to pass anyway. If this takes me three years, four years, five years, I don't care. If I do this and stick to it, it will happen. Mm -hmm. And here, here we are, you know, so. And now yeah. you're in a position, so your account has now quadrupled, and yeah. it's, uh, it's such a such an amazing feeling. So when we structured this, of course, like I said, it took a little bit longer. It took a couple of years, and it took a couple of years for like the right reason. There's so much compliance. There's so many things behind the scenes that people don't realize that sometimes I'm I'm doing and the team is doing, and making sure that people are safeguarded. My primary goal is to make sure that people have a safe environment that is sustainable, that they can actually put pen to paper and say, this is a life I wanna live. Like a genuine, big, scary goals I wanna live. What's the chances that I can actually succeed at that? And what's the pathway? There's the whole pathway. Even yeah, if you yeah. come from a poor background, doesn't matter. No yeah, excuses, like it's right there for you. With that community brings a great support network. Um, and I actually think that's been so important if people are going through rough periods, if they need advice, if they need coaching, it, it's all there. It's all mapped out. Everything mm -hmm. is there. Don't look over your shoulder. Don't look at what that guy's doing. Don't look at the other company. It's all here. The people are here. The the skill sets all mapped out. There's thousands of hours of content. Everything is there to succeed. You've just got to dedicate yourself and put in mm -hmm. the work. Mm -hmm. That's the key. So community is super important. And um, something as I scale up and, and grow myself within the within my journey, keen to give back and help those coming through. Mm. You know, if I can do it, seriously, anyone can do it. Eight. So this is Pickles. Eight. Say hello, Pickles. Oh, this is the old boy, Theo. Eight. He's so chilled and relaxed. Scrambled egg time. Yeah, she's ready for some scrambled egg. <laughs> so I'm about to break my fast. I'm so, so hungry. Too much Tabasco sauce. <laughs> How's it going guys? Breaking my fast, avocado, eggs. A bit too much eggs here, wow, spicy. Some spring onions, uh, lemon, black pepper, Tabasco sauce, and, um, and some focaccia bread as well. So I'll have that just while I'm uh, looking at the market. I'm about to enter position on Euro Aussie. So that trade I was looking at earlier, that I was talking about Euro Aussie will be likely on watch today. That'll be the only one. So I'm literally about to set an order on that that is looking nice so we've got the four hour confirmation that was what i was talking about those tweezer tops on the four hour one hour chart nice little push down 15 minute there we are so we're just enough at the moment that tiny consolidation euro aussie in particular has this tendency early on in the move does really well very very impulsive so those flags don't stick around for too long there's actually a little refinement that i'm working on and i'll i'll cover a little bit more about that later that I'm working on for the community. So I figured a way out that I can keep stops, the easiest way to explain, I can keep stops in the same place without compromising any of that 
but increasing the risk to reward in a sustainable way in the way that we trade the market. So I'm very diligent and very thorough with the things that I do, especially the community that will know that. And this is gonna change the game. Believe you me, doing exactly what you're doing, keeping your stops protected in the same area, but increasing your risk to reward. It's easy to get a big risk to reward, just put a stop, tight stop loss on. And then some trades, they will work out. But the reality is, if you've compromised where your stops are, it's not gonna work out very well for you. So that's really, really important. So I will be getting involved in that, looking like about 27, yeah, 27 pip stop will be more than enough on that one, guys. So I'm just gonna have some food here and then take a look at that. I'll be entering that now. Well, hopefully you guys have been enjoying behind the scenes, by the way. It's, um, it's been a packed day literally since 5.30 this morning. <laughs> Sorry, each time they're so strong. I like to keep my days dynamic in the sense that every day is different. So I would actually quite, if you guys enjoy this type of content, I'll do a day in the life at another time as well. But literally any day can be, any day can be different. So let's get this order on. For those that ask us about brokers as well, FXCM, IG Index, Oanda, whatever ones that you feel comfortable with is up to you in different countries, it'll be different things. But I almost feel like sometimes people think there's this magical broker that is gonna save you, it isn't. Just do your due diligence and make sure that you're with a safe broker. It's really that simple. There we go, so order on. Right guys, so when it comes to, when it comes to trading, this is the thing that I was, I haven't got a clue of, I might not even get tagged into a trade, right? I haven't got a clue how many times that I'm gonna take a position. I could go three days without placing a trade. I absolutely love the way that we trade the markets because it's so flexible. I'm not glued to my screen all day long. So don't expect this day in a life where I'm sitting by my chart eight hours a day because I'm not. I didn't design my life that way. I know what I want to. And some people think, right, yeah, but I just wanna be there and I wanna be in the markets. Th this feeling of thinking that the more time that you're in front of the markets, that that makes you more of a trader is absolutely false and it's a myth. The more time you're in front of the charts actually increases your chances of probably forcing positions that are not there. So for those of you that are aspiring traders, I want you to think about building a life that you want to live. Think about in a couple of years from now, do you wanna be glued to the screen all the time or do you wanna be able to take two or three trades a week, four trades a week as you scale up so you can work on other projects. Projects I work on, I'm running multiple businesses. Like I said, each day is different and I love that. So something to think about anyway but we'll see if this this position triggers so i'm going to finish off some food now guys and i've still got a packed day for the rest of the day so i'll catch you guys in a bit so just finished up the inside the mind podcast with brian really really solid he has grown so much. I remember back in the earlier days, but he's just one of these people that just keeps himself locked in, in the shadows, just cracks on and gets it done. So super happy for him, especially for him and his family. He's achieving some seriously big goals, very, very level-headed. And what I loved about what he done, when you just look at his trades, just simple, keeping to risk. Exactly what we've been saying all this time. There are so many people that are edging closer towards getting past that next phase. And once they do, they'll realize why this risk management is so important. But yeah, it was really, really sort of can't wait for you guys to hear it. It'll be out really, really soon. And you'll love it. I think you'll resonate with his story as well. And you see how switched on he is, but more importantly, where he's going. So just head into the gym. It is 4 p.m. UK time right now. Gonna get a nice afternoon session. And Fridays is always my stack day because I do faster cardio in the morning. I have my PT session, which is a bit half and half, where it's normally, it, sometimes it's a full treatment. And then I train later on. Um, I love it that way, to be honest, because it's always my fullest day. And I wouldn't, have it, I wouldn't have it any other way. So it's important to me that I have enough fuel, like my food, everything is planned, even to what I wear, right? If you can just literally take care of what you're going to eat and what you're going to wear, I promise you this will be one of the biggest life hacks you ever have. I don't think about it. I have the same thing. I've got like seven of these. My black t-shirts, I must have like 60 of those. And I just have the same stuff over and over again. And because I realized from super wealthy people, I noticed that common pattern that they don't waste their time on what to wear. Why? Because if you spend all that time thinking about what you're going to wear and eat, it just takes away that mental energy that you can be putting somewhere else. Literally just took a break even on Euro Aussie, so that was a very, very quick break even. Highly doubt that I'll be taking another trade by the end of the day, purely just because it'll be market closed before you know it. So gym session now, really nice trade. I mean, again, for, for me this week, two positions. 
1.4% on Aussie Kiwi, which I could have locked in more, but it's one of those pairs that you have to manage a little bit more loosely. And there was so much upside potential on that buy. So left that where it was, but happy with the 1.4. And then just a very quick break even on Euro Aussie on a different day that Euro Aussie trade will be playing out for a very, very nice profit. So happy that across the board, two trades for the week. And yeah, we'll see if anything, it would have to be something super spectacular if I'm gonna look at another position today. But tonight I'll be going through the whole prep work as what I do for the Sunday market breakdown for the Falcon community as well. So you'll see that behind the scenes, the level of detail and hours and prep that I do for each week because you need to go through the little details and that does compound. You might think sometimes you don't really need to do that amount of hours. But the reality is over time, it's those small little extra things they do add up and they compound in a very, very powerful way. But yeah, time for the gym. This one here. Mm -hmm. But this is where I used to live, Brishian Lane. Wow, this is like this is this is crazy. So I, I lived here up until about four or five years old. You get you get dealt the hand that you get dealt. You know, I grew up in a council estate. Um, then I then moved to literally two minutes down the road, which is pretty much similar to this. But this was like crazy memories coming back from this. Really, really crazy memories. And I always, like, I randomly take these details, and the reason why I do them, like, even when I'm just on my own, I do it at least two or three times a week. And the reason why I do that is it just, it reminds me of where I came from. And every single time I remind myself of where I came from, it helps me to celebrate my wins. It helps me to celebrate, right, this is where you were, and this is where you are now. This was deliberate. This wasn't luck. This was hard graft, day in, day out, and I still keep on going. Still keep on going. Right guys, so before I get ready for the premiere for the Falcon YouTube tonight, I'm just stopping off at my parents as it is on the way. And they're very close to moving guys. So for those of you who haven't seen on my personal channel, I've been documenting that building their dream home. It's literally like days, days away, literally. So it'll be this will be one of the last times I actually go to my childhood home. So I'm gonna pop in with them, see if they're all good. And then I'll head back. to actually capture this day you know actually show people because you know your days sort of like vary and change so much yeah it's it's manic it's crazy it's dynamic that's the thing like uh, when i thought about people ask me all the time you know do a day in a life you know and i just thought well, which day yeah. you know my days are so different all the yeah, time yeah. so i like to i like to be dynamic with it and and do different things like sometimes it's very full-on sometimes i just want to do like three good things and just get them accomplished but it depends what type of thing it is sometimes i'm more like running errands sometimes i have more meetings sometimes i have much more free time in front of the charts yeah. and although I, I don't really like to be like glued to the charts to be honest exactly. just because that is, it doesn't benefit you by doing so but naturally sometimes if there isn't as much on i'll just gravitate towards the charts just because like I can't get bored of it. It's like one of these things that one, when you're really, really passionate about something like that, you'll just look at something. You'll, you'll go over the same pair again. You'll reforecast something. You'll still look at something. And because I have enough skill set now to be able to not let that influence me to, to oh. Speaker there. <laughs> Yo, Abdu. Hey, how are you, Jack? 
said go time. Uh, well, we was actually recording, so yeah, so you're. <laughs> so don't, don't say. I was any, literally calling to ask how did. did yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> don't say don't say any swear don't say any swear words. So you're you're on camera. When do I ever swear? <laughs> Come on, everyone knows that I don't swear. <laughs> no, but I was just calling to ask how did the uh, the podcast with Brian go? Oh, it went so good, so so good. Brian is. Brian is so switched on. It like this is the crazy thing, right? He was he was really um, surprised that he was the first one to like kind of go through to the next stage. But like when you actually speak to Brian and you realise that like he knows his stuff, like he's he's been he's been he's, you know he's been in Falcon for a few years, but he's so patient and understands. Like one of the first things he said is like I don't care about the returns. Like I know that I'm scaling up to seven figures and even three, four, five percent on seven figures, like you understand financially what that can do for you. And I think that type of mindset it is what you need. So he absolutely smashed it. And no, I think it's funny, exactly as you said, the person who literally didn't care about the results was the first one to pass. And just having the first one to pass is just super sick. It's, it's, it's almost like the four, like I said to him, it's almost like the four minute mile, you know, like the Roger Bannister, yeah, like one, exactly. one, one, yeah, per, one person yeah. does it and then everybody floods through it. And I just think- and I think what we have a lot of students that are like hovering about the past. So like I, I know myself, Benny Neal coach quite a few of those students. Um, but they're like hovering, I believe, off just off of my head, right? Yeah, the, super sick. I think there's mm. a, I think there's about 22 that are like borderline about to pass, but they've got to fulfill more of their trading days, etc. But like, it's very, very close. Are oh, you, you caught yeah, the, uh, the Kiwi N trade, right? Yeah, I was exactly. I closed out the Kiwi N for just under seven percent. So nice. That was really solid. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy with that one. And then, um, dude, have you been looking at the crypto market? Well, firstly, um, where was the signal? Where was, <laughs> where dude, was? I tried to call you. You're at your wedding. What was I supposed to do about that? <laughs> but yeah, no, crypt cryptos is um, cryptos is popping off. I think ADA is like over two dollars now, right? Yeah, yeah, it broke its all-time high, dude. ADA, and I'm sure you remember this. It's giving me a lot of 2017 vibes to um, Litecoin. Where... Yeah. But I just think across the board, it it looks it, it does give me those same vibes as well. I can, I can really really feel it in the markets. All in all, it's been 100 miles an hour today, but I've absolutely loved it. And yeah, I'm gonna finish off tonight. But yeah, um, you enjoy that with your with your cousin as well. Nice one, bro. Catch you in a bit. Bye. Bye. -bye. Right guys, so it's actually 7 p.m. now here in the UK and every Friday is Falcon Friday. So we have a video that comes out every single Friday. We have done since the channel was created. So for those of you coming to the channel for the very first time, make sure you are subscribed. So you wanna keep in the loop of these videos. And I absolutely love just seeing the people that engage with the channel on a regular basis, like every single week. It's why we put the effort in to do that. And just to give back, you know, it's, it's so, so fun. So we're about to jump in there now and catch up with the guys. It's almost virtually impossible, and I don't believe it's even out there. Necessary ingredient towards your trading success now, short term, medium term, long term. You do not know how to get excited about it. The experiment on that is going to help you tap into your peak performance. I love my sis. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I will catch you in the next one. I'll see you all soon. Take care, guys. Right guys, so we are towards the end of the day. It's been a very eventful day, so hopefully you've enjoyed kind of coming along with me with the day. It's not a, I don't wanna say it's a very typical day because Friday is always a bit different for me. Friday is always my longest day, especially because I go into the prep work. It is, it's 20 to, 20 to midnight already. I've already done half of my prep work already and I'm gonna get into more of that. I'll probably finish up about 1 a.m. I do this every single Friday. I've been doing this for literally year, like nearly five years. And the reason as to why is because it's it's the small details, it's the extra mile, it's the extra effort, because it's not just about my watch list, it's about who am I communicating that towards. Not everybody learns the same way. So for me, what I do is I take that very seriously and I think about, right, if there was a beginner listening to this, how would they wanna hear that? If someone was intermediate, how would they wanna hear that? If there was someone advanced, what are the small little details that I can share, showcase, 
so then they can start to implement that into their trading. It's not just about analysis. Analysis is fast, it's quick. You can kind of know your watch list within a couple of hours, you have a very good idea. I already have a very good idea because I'm constantly blueprinting the markets. I know what's going on, but I'm thinking about how do I explain to all different types of people? So that's why I do the hours and that's why I do this every single time because it stops me from getting complacent, it keeps me sharp. And that is why that I'll do that every single time. So I normally go to about 1 a.m. and then I will have about five, six, probably about six hours sleep and then I'll be back again in the morning. Total sort of time for me doing this kind of prep work is anywhere between seven to 10 hours. And some people might think that's over the top, but it's what keeps me sharp, what keeps me in the game, making sure that I think that when I look back even from more years ago, I have over a decade of experience in the markets, when I look back, it will all, I know it will be down to those small details because I've already noticed that in my trading career and I will continue to do so because I'm thinking about people worldwide in our community and that's very, very important to me. So I'll continue to do that every single time. Not a, a typical day if you like, but hopefully you've picked up gems along the way and you've enjoyed this kind of thing. If you'd like to see more of that, of course, let us know. I'm gonna get into some more prep work now as I kind of conduct my watch list to make sure that it's as clear as possible. I've tailored it, I've filtered things out. So then I know going into the markets, the clearest opportunities for the week ahead. This week to have a little bit of a recap. So I took Euro Aussie today, took a break even on that real quick. So it was just one of those ones that didn't commit on a different day. It's a very, very nice position. Uh, Aussie Kiwi 1.4%. I did miss a trade earlier, which was not today, but I did miss a trade this week, which was Euro Aussie long. That would have been out for about about 8%, 7 or 8%, so a bit of discrepancy there, but I've had a very, very packed week. I had my friend's wedding earlier uh, this week on Monday as well, and lots of different things as well. So you have to understand, right? Sometimes you take a loss, sometimes you take a win. This is what trading is. You don't measure yourself week to week. Not one bad week or month will make or break you, and this is more of a message to trading as, as a whole. Way too many of you, you're judging yourself on such short time frames. For me, 1.4% for the week. That could be more than someone's yearly salary. And this is the thing, there's, there's power in these numbers. Stop fixating on returns and focus on doing things sustainable. So as you scale up and you have more capital, those percentages actually mean something to you. And then that excites you. And you probably saw from the interview earlier that we had with, with Brian, which I hopefully you enjoyed a little snippet of that. We have that full podcast coming, which you'll you absolutely love. Big shout out to Brian again, he's absolutely smashed it. I'm so proud of him. And there's so many more people just edging closer towards that. I'm super excited, guys. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a strong end to the year, that's for sure. So at the moment, it's foot to the pedal. And when I get another opportunity to take you guys along with me for the day, I'll definitely do so. But for right now, I'm gonna finish up with some chart work. That didn't go to plan, did it? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I possess until I succeed. Oh, fuck's sake, that was a 7% position. <laughs> <laughs>